Good evening and um, all of you listening live and those of you that are going to dial in and watch it on YouTube. So we've now arrived at text chapter 7, Gifts of the Kingdom at 7.6. Um, this chapter is called uh, From Vigilance to Peace. And before we, we get into the actual text itself, I, I just want to bring you into into an awareness. So the always, as a suggestion, always before you start reading the course, just before you just open and start reading, just clear your mind, get rid of the thoughts, and just go quiet and realize that this is your highest self, you the decision maker, you the dreamer, is being addressed by the voice for God, which is the memory of God in your mind while you dream. And in this world, we, we all seek for freedom, financial freedom, whatever freedom. And there's a belief that, and, and this is a, a spiritual belief, you know, it's quite an advanced belief compared to you know, the freedom of the body, for example, wanting to be free from society. That true freedom means the freedom to choose. And we believe that the freedom to choose, or freedom of choice, means that we then have many choices, that we have an ongoing ability to keep choosing whatever we want for ourselves. And this isn't true in true reality. In true reality, there's really only one choice. In actual fact, there is no choice at all. And that no choice in the dream appears as a single choice, although it may appear to us as if we have two choices. And the choices for which mind do we choose? Do we choose the wrong mind, the, the, the domain of the ego, in which there appears to be hundreds of choices, each choice just leading to more questions and to more choices, never really filling us up with, with truth, and therefore we're never fulfilled because it's it's, the choice for acquiring and for autonomous freedom, freedom, meaning we think we can be autonomous, autonomy, meaning separated from our very source. We cannot. The only real choice we have is the right minded choice. And so when confronted with a decision in this world, your choices are the wrong minded choice where it's, it's, it's always complicated and leads to more questions or right minded choice, which is, Choosing to recognize yourself as that which is, that which is the awareness of being aware, the, the recognition, the knowing of one's being, and that being, which is a shared being with everything in the universe, the essence of everything, the truth of everything in the universe, every single being on this universe is shared. And what appears to be different autonomous people separated by bodies space and time is untrue. And so when reading this text, find yourself in the center, find yourself as that which observes and realize that it's addressing the text, the course is addressing the mind that has dreamt up this entire universe and all the characters, all the people that have lived in this world throughout time. And therefore, the beings such as the Jesus, the Buddhas, the Krishnas, the deities, the gurus that have come before us are not separate entities to us, the dreamer, the decision maker. They are parts of our dream characters that have awoken to the self I am, to the very essence of what we are. And so although the course takes us through a process where it appears as, to, as if the voice it speaks to us is the Jesus voice, and then later on, the Holy Spirit voice. Realize that the Holy Spirit is your awake mind. It's your spirit, fully awake. It's not a separate entity. And Jesus is symbolic of you on this earth, fully awake 2,000 years ago. And now is simply a representation of what you could be like when you're awake in this world. So, he became, so a part of ourself came to this world manifested as Jesus, to demonstrate awakeness while dreaming, while in body mindful. And, and human nature has the need to objectify God. And because the idea of our source 
or the essence is too vague, and even just the idea of a God is incomprehensible, we've then had an mediators in between God and us. And in Christianity, it happens to be Jesus. In Advaita Vedanta, there's many. In Buddhism, there's the Buddha. In, Christ, in, 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 Christ, in, um, in, in the Krishna teachings, there's the Krishna himself. In Taoism, there's Lao Tzu. There's many a deity that has come before to bring through this higher consciousness. But true freedom is the recognition that the self, your self, which is everyone's self, that is always free because it's not attached to the world of bodies. It's not attached to the world of objectification, where it wants to attach or follow something or someone. And so at some stage in your own transcendence from understanding to knowing, there will come a time, if it hasn't already happened, where you'll realize you are your own true savior. And that something like the Course is your very highest holy self, the Holy Spirit self, Son of God, awake self, that has now realized it's dreaming, coming back at you to remind you that this dream was over before it began and that the only reason the dream appears to still continue is because you haven't recognized what you really are and therefore don't know what you are and as a consequence don't know what your source is or what God is. And so not knowing what you are, believing that you're something based on whatever dogma you've been taught before, whatever philosophies you've taken on, you still see yourself as a separate being with a distance path to go to awaken and one day be, you know, celebrating your awakening with a Jesus character somewhere in this heaven or the spirit world, not realizing that the very essence of what you are, the self, is heaven. The very essence of what you are is love. It is an extension of God, which is love. So the very essence of you, which is the only part of you which is real, is love. And so when you recognize that through understanding, when you comprehend it, that is the second step. So first it's going in looking for it. The second step is the comprehension. The third step, when you become grateful for your new understanding, that gratitude transcends understanding into the pure knowing of that essence. So it's not that you know the essence. You become the known essence. You become the knowing of the essence. The essence and the knowing are the same. And this is the realm just before true knowledge when you fully remember what you are in God as God and completely forget that this dream universe has ever existed. And that's a fundamental understanding. The reason the world still appears to exist is because we haven't taken full responsibility for being the dreamer. And that this dreamer that has dreamt up both the spirit world and the physical universe, all of this is in its mind. And mind is also consciousness. So consciousness, the entire universe exists in consciousness. But yet nothing that is objectifiable or ob that is object, space, time, matter, has consciousness. A rock has no consciousness. A body has no consciousness. A tree has no consciousness. Now, of course, the, the spiritual realm, the esoteric realm, love said, oh, but the tree has feelings, you know, the mountain has feelings, the earth has feelings, the planet has feelings. No. No tree, no planet has feelings. Your body has no feelings. The animals have no feelings. Animals, trees, rocks, mountains, planet exists in consciousness. And that which is consciousness is you, the truth you, the observer. The body has none. And the feelings of the body, the sensations of the body are expressions of the physical projection manifestation through which you experience your manifestation. Once you let go of the manifestation and awaken to self, universe disappears, rocks, trees, planets, plants, animals, all of it disappears. And where's those feelings? They don't exist because there's nothing to feel. And so if there's nothing to feel, it was never real. And that which is simply the observer of all of it 
experiencing feeling sensations, thoughts, is the projected device. So the device is what feels and then thinks it's autonomous and has its own mind or has its own feelings. None of it does. Everything exists in consciousness, but things that exist in consciousness don't have consciousness. They exist because they exist in the mind, in pure consciousness. When the mind is fully awake, it returns to the consciousness of capital M, God's mind. And that is pure consciousness too. It's just this. And thinking is pure consciousness filtered through brain. Brain, not mind. Filtered through brain. In mind. All happening in mind, in consciousness. And that's vital that that fundamental understanding is grasped before you can get to that point of knowingly becoming that which you always have been, are, and will be, which is the beingness, the shared being, which you have with everything and obviously with God. So we get into the text, and let's do some highlighting here, just as you follow me as I read. So although you can love the sonship, oops, you can love the sonship only as one. So the entire sonship is one mind. So all the fractured people that you see in the world are fractures of the same mind. Each one localized perspective of the whole. You can perceive it as fragmented. And it's because we perceive it as localized fragmented, we see the world from a localized perspective. Not remembering we are the dreamer localizing 8 billion bodies that believe it's separated. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And thus fragmented. It is impossible, however, to see something in part of it that you would not attribute to all of it. In other words, if you look at the ocean and you would take a bucket of water out of the ocean, in that bucket of water contains the entire DNA, the essence of the entire ocean. And the entire ocean is in the bucket, the bucket's in the ocean, same thing. And so when you start to realize what you are, you realize what everything is, you realize it's all one, sonship only as one. That is why attack is never discreet and why it must be relinquished entirely, whether it be physical or attack thoughts. If it is not relinquished entirely, it is not relinquished at all. Why? Because if you maintain one part of the illusion, you maintain the entire illusion. And yet if you grasp one part of truth, you grasp the entire truth. And so that's why you either choose right-mindedness or wrong-mindedness. You can't choose to hold on to a part of wrong-mindedness because it serves you, but want to be right-minded. You are completely right-minded, which means you've given the authority of your mind to the Holy Spirit, or you're wrong-minded, which means you've given the authority of your mind to the ego. And therefore, you're. And if you try and do both, you go through huge confusion and huge stress trying to appease both. You can't. So choose wisely. Choose again. Fear and love make or create. So it's either fear and love or to make or create. You can't do both. You can't make and create. You can't fear and love. You either love or you, or you fear. You either make or you create, depending on whether the ego or the Holy Spirit begets or inspires them. Begets, creates makes okay so the holy spirit inspires and whereas the ego begets in other words makes begotten not made and so as this chapter says and it alludes to it it's from vigilance to peace that we want to go we want to use our vigilance to make sure that when we decide and when we choose and instead of getting captured by the world and, and all the things going on in the world we choose right-mindedness, silence, be still, and know I am. The minute you try and analyze it, the minute you try and make sense of a senseless dream, you will be trapped in the dream, not being able to make sense of anything. So, so it begets or inspires them. But they will return to the mind of the thinker, and they, they will affect his total perception. So if your perception is in terms of inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your life becomes inspirational. If, you're, if your mind is focused on the beginning, the making manifest, 
okay, of the ego, that's what you focus on. And that's what you see the world is so wrapped up on. And if you look at really the antics of the new world order, trying to control the world and dominate and, and gain as much wealth as they can, why do they want wealth? Because wealth is then used to manage other people and therefore what they really want is power. Why do they want power? Why does this new world sociopathic behavior want power? Why? Because they fear their death and they want to control things outside them because they don't realize the shared being of it all. And so they want to manage and control and dominate. Okay. So affect his total perception. And that includes his concept of God, of his creations and his own. So based on what you believe you think, you will then have a relationship to what you believe God thinks and vice versa. He will not appreciate any of them if he regards them fearfully, capital T. So we're talking about God and your own creations which is the sonship, the extension of God. He will appreciate all of them if he regards them with love. And that's why it says you have to love maximum. You have to love your creation. And very often what we do and why the course becomes very difficult as we go through the development of trust, manual for teachers gives the stages, which means fully relying on God, realizing that you're not autonomous, you're joined, and that the only freedom you have is the freedom to choose which mind you follow. In truth, even that is a myth because you will ultimately, without, can't help it, you will eventually go back to Holy Spirit mind, to your true nature, to your true essential nature. The mind that accepts attack cannot love because they're in contradiction. That is because it believes it can destroy love. So to attack is to destroy and therefore does not understand what love is. Love is the very essence of what you are and the very essence of what everyone else is. So how can you that is love attack? You can't. And how can you that is love attack love when it's the same essence as you? So what are you actually attacking? Even if it appears that it's attack thoughts or bodies attacking at bodies, you're attack, attacking perceptions and projections of yourself or you're attacking your own mind. That's what attack really is. In truth, it's not possible. If it does not understand what love is, in other words, the essence of what you are, it cannot perceive itself as loving. And so we often hear things like self-love, and that means you could take yourself to a weekend retreat and go and do massages and get your hair done and your nails done and whatever, you know. That's not self-love. That is, that's pleasure of body. It's got nothing to do with self-love. Self-love is the accepting that the very essence of what you are is the same essence as what is God made in God's image. No, extended as the essence of God. And the rest isn't real. And self-love is the recognition of self as the love of God. Self-love is the recognition that you are love. You can't love yourself, but you can acknowledge yourself as love. Self-love is the acknowledgement of our shared being. And therefore the extension of our shared being, which is, extending out as we do, as we create. And that is loving your creation. That is loving all of this, irrespective of what it appears to be. Because what it is in truth is the essence of the self. This, this loses the awareness of being. Okay, So this is so vital, the awareness of being. Those of you that follow me on, on Facebook and on my talks, you realize I'm continually talking about the awareness of being, the awareness of self, of shared being. You are not an individual being. Okay? You're, you are a shared being, a shared self, a shared soul. You don't have an individual soul. Being, self, and, and soul is the one and the same thing. Don't get confused there. And it's the shared being that you share with the dreamer, the dreamer, which is the son of God, the shared being that you share with the Christ, the Jesus that came 2,000 years ago, the Buddha, the Krishna, Sai Baba, uh, Neem Karoli Baba, Ram Das, all of these wonderful teachers that came and awoke through their lifetimes. It's a shared being. Okay? And so when you lose the awareness of your being, which is this, the extension of God's being, you, you're, you are the dreamer, which is the extension of God. And so you activity in, in the dreamer's dream. You're an extension of the dreamer. Therefore, indirectly, you're the extension of God. And so this loses the awareness of being, induces feelings of unreality, 
and results in utter confusion. And the feelings of unreality is anything that is out of flux with total peace. And so any sensation, any feeling, any emotion that you have that is not peaceful isn't true. It's ego-based. And there's a lot of people, especially the, the high empaths, they go through a phase and it is a phase. They will get out of it sometime in this lifetime or the next or the next where they feel the, the pain of the world and they feel it intensely and they become sad in themselves. Sadness is ego. It's, you're not doing the world a favor by taking on the sadness and carrying sadness. It's not real. Wrong-mindedness. Sadness is you bought into the world is real and the activities of the world are saddening and depressing and horrible and you've taken it on. And so you're, you've misinterpreted and you believe yourself to be emotionally sensitive. It's ego and it traps you and pulls you down. Okay? Empaths hate to hear that. Because it means admitting that they were wrong because they valued themselves as different because they had empathy and they could feel. And that made them special. Maybe not as wealthy as the billionaire, but they could feel and take on everybody else's pain and cry at a whim. And now what are they going to hang on to? So, so you want to tell me feelings and empathy isn't special? No, it's ego. Empathy is ego. Oh, my goodness. This is going to start a riot. And that's a fact. Because if you feel it's not true, knowing feels nothing. It's the knowing. And when that knowing is extended, it comes out as pure love. What is pure love? Total acceptance. The extension of peace. The extension of joy. No sadness. No, Ooh, I feel I'm so depressed. It looks at it and laughs at the world's suffering. It laughs at sadness. It laughs at disparity. Why? Because it's not true. It's not laughing because it's being cruel. It laughs because it knows it's not true. And it's finally free of that idea that it took on and imposed upon itself called suffering. Your thinking has done this because of your, its power, the power of your mind. But your thinking can also save you from this because its power is not of your making. The power comes directly from God. Your ability to direct your thinking as you choose is part of its power, right or wrong-minded. Not millions of choices, two choices, one is false, one is true, right-mindedness. And even that isn't a choice when you awaken to the reality that there's no choice but to be that as be as you are. If you do not believe that you can do this, and this is vital, you have denied the power of your thought and thus rendered it powerless in your belief, and yet it affects you negatively. And so you must believe in it. You just haven't realized that you're believing incorrectly. Is a correction that's needed. The ingeniousness of the ego to preserve itself is enormous, but it stems from the very power of the mind the ego denies. And that's where it, that's its downfall ultimately. Because the ego is aware of the power of the mind, the mind consciousness, the dreamer. So mind is the dreamer. It's the activity of the dreamer's dream. That's what mind is. As the dreamer is the activity of God's mind, the extension of God's mind. The dreamer awake, the dreamer asleep, still an extension of God. Just that this, in this case, this dreamer that has dreamt of this entire universe, this mind is asleep. But the power in the mind is the same, whether to make or create. It's incredibly powerful. And yet the ego doesn't want you to know this and yet it wants to use it. And I'll give you an example how it uses it. The secret law of attraction. Make manifest your happiness. Create your ideal job, your ideal partner, your ideal children, your ideal career, your ideal house. What are you doing? You're making the illusion real for you and then attaching to the illusion. If those things are meant to be and the script is written and they're meant to be, they'll come, but not by you chasing them, but by you extending yourself joyfully. The joyful extension of what you are attracts the joyful experience of what you are in what appears to be physicality. But it, that's not the main, main aim. This means that the ego attacks what it is, what is preserving it. So it attacks the very thing that holds it and gives it life, which, it must, which, which must result in extreme anxiety. Why? The very thing that the ego wants to attack is the thing that keeps it alive. That is why the ego never recognizes what it's doing, because if it did, it would stop doing it. It is perfectly logical, but clearly insane. It's got a very clever way of processing. 
but it's not sane. The ego draws upon the one source that is totally inimical to its existence for its existence. So it's totally harmful to its existence. Inimical means to be harmful or to be destructive to, to its existence for its existence. So see the paradox of the ego it draws upon the one source that is to totally and harmful to its existence for its existence. Fear of perceiving the power of this source is it is forced to depreciate it, knowing that it is all powerful and can destroy it. What it does is then attacks it by depreciating it and, and convincing you that, it, that you have no power. Think of all the people that are victims in this world. They don't believe they have the ability to get out of it. And so they stay and they need help. And yet, who's helping them? Another fraction of themselves is helping. Yet, if someone else can help you, and you all of us, then you can help yourself out of this too. And hence the need for deities and the saviors, because we don't believe we can on our own. And that's okay, because at some stage, the deity, the, the savior, takes us to a certain direction. But at a certain stage, you have to realize it's all me. I'm my own savior. Okay, Why? Because the memory of God is in me. God's essence is in me. So my true saving grace is God's essence, which is the real me. That which saves me is my inward turning and sinking into the essence I am. This threatens its own existence, the state which it finds intolerable. It doesn't even want to think about it. doesn't want to face it. Remaining logical but still insane, the ego resolves this completely insane, insane dilemma in a completely insane way. It does not perceive its existence as threatened by projecting the threat onto you, the body-mind identity, which, by the way, is what the ego has created. And so it's now projecting the threat of its existence onto the very thing which is its existence. How insane is that? And thus perceiving your being as non-existent. And so this idea of being or soul or self or spirit becomes just a concept. And it's a concept you have to first understand, accept it's possible, understand its reality. And then through abiding in that silent reality of understanding, through gratitude, the transcendence comes, the ascension comes, the ascension of your consciousness, the dissolving of your association to the body-mind, and the, the recognition of your being as the shared being, as the dreamer, as the son of God, as the Christ. No different to Jesus, just in, text, just in the appearance of time and space. In actual fact, when you become Christ, you join with that which once was Jesus, who now is Christ. You dissolve. The world dissolves for you. The dream ends for you. You awaken in the awake Christ mind, bridge consciousness, and await the rest of your fractured selves, their remembrance of what they are. And what do you do? You know, as that light of awareness, Christ mind. You now intensify the light in the mind. So with each being, each fractured being awakening, the dreamer being awakens more and more. And that's why the greatest service you give to the world is not by trying to fix the illusion, repair the illusion, is by recognition of your own being, which means you awaken, you enlighten the mind, not your mind, the collective mind. And for each one of us awakening, the dreamer, more and more of the dreamer's characters in the, in the dream wake up and the dreamer realizes it's all me I and the dreamer wakes up. And as soon as the dreamer wakes up, even though there may be lots of fractures of itself asleep, that awakening will just share instantly with all the sleeping fractures and the awakening will take place instantaneously. And that understanding was misunderstood in the early dogmatic doctrines and they saw it as a rapturing the rapture, end of days, where God would come and take the good ones home and leave the bad ones to suffer in hell. No, the bad ones just dissolve as so do the good ones, as the good ones dissolve in the light of awareness. The bad ones, the so-called bad ones, just spontaneously combust into the light of awareness too, aware of it or not, because the whole mind awakens, enlightens, like he wakes up, sun is shining, realizes I'm awake, forgets the dream of the universe, the entire universe, and realizes I'm part of the light, which is source. I've never left. 
No dogs, no cats, no mothers, no heaven, no spirit. It's just pure light. The light of awareness, the light which is God, the light which is love. How beautiful is that? And this ensures it's continuance. So believing that it's you are non-existent, your beingness is non-existent, you then believe you're a body-mind and try and make this thing last forever, which is what the world's new world order is trying to do, trying to hang on to life, not realizing you've got a lifespan, dude. You're going to die anyway. You can take as much colloidal, whatever silver you want to and, and get all the funny machines and do Botox and facial enhancements. but you know, how long are you going to live? 100 years? Let's double it. 200 years. And then, and then it's over. So you, you hope your kids will live for you. Well, you don't know if they turn out to be bunnies and, and spiritual bunnies and whatever, and they just give it all away. So what, what is the ego fighting? It's trying to preserve itself by keeping us all suppressed. And when we suppressed and dominate it, there's no time for awakening. Or so the ego thinks. The ego doesn't realize is in the darkest times is when most of the, of, of the selves awaken to themselves. Because it's when they finally give up trying to fight it, surrender to what is. And that's when the awakening takes place. There were more people in that period of the Second World War through the concentration camps that awoke in those concentration camps than they had in the 200 years prior to that. And that, by the way, came out in my 3,000 regression case studies that I did, that the reason the Second World War happened, one of the reasons the Second World War happened, this sounds horrific, is because of the atrocities. Because when people were subjected to atrocities, they had to surrender. And in that surrendering, they woke up. And that's why many of them died willingly. They just wanted to go because they realized the whole thing's a dream, the whole thing's a scam. Those that resisted it and fought with bitter hearts came back and are reliving it. Okay. And so this ensures its continuance if you side with it by guaranteeing that you will not know your own safety. And the idea of safety is also absurd because the very essence of what you are doesn't only live eternally. It's eternally safe. That which can be threatened, that which can be destroyed isn't real. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God right at the beginning of the book. Okay. So the ego cannot afford to know anything, anything true. Knowledge is total, and knowledge is only of God. Okay. Yeah, we get understanding, and then we transcend that understanding into knowing. But pure knowledge, which is really the knowledge of the knowing of oneself as the extension of God in totality, not in concept, but in beingness, in the experience of it, we call it experience through the body. That's a concession of words. Because experience is a physical thing. It's just the knowing of it. It's the all-pervading essence of the, of the light of continuous awareness in that which is consciousness itself, God. So knowledge is total. And the ego does not believe in totality. If it did, wouldn't have a world filled with 8 billion bodies. This, unbel this unbelief is its origin. And while the ego does not love you, it is faithful to its own antecedents, meaning as it was begotten. So it's got an own, own sequence. The antecedents of it is it's got a sequence of doing things, what comes before, what comes after. And that sequence is programmed in the ego's process. And awakening just dissolves all of that. And it doesn't want to. And so it doesn't want to believe in its origin because its origin is fear that entered the dreamer's mind. So ego is simply a fearful thought which has kept reproducing, making, and therefore has reproduced itself in many different ways. The thought of poverty, the thought of loss, the thought of being alone, the thought of being hurt, the thought of being attacked, the thought of being wrong, the thought of being not good enough. So it split itself up into a myriad of ways of interpreting fear. Okay. Mind always reproduces as it was produced so produced by fear, the ego reproduces fear. And the dreamer's mind fell asleep and the universe was created by fear, not love. So we want to get all romantic about the universe and look at God. And given to the Holy Spirit, it becomes a memory of God, an echo for the voice of God. But the entire universe, including the beautiful sunsets, the beautiful ocean, the beautiful mountains, the beautiful whatever beautiful, was created out of fear. Okay? And you just have to look at a spider long enough to realize and remember that. <laughs> and it's all just fear. Okay. 
This is its allegiance. And this allegiance makes it treacherous to love because you are love. You're the love of God. Never forget this. Very essence of what you are. And this, those of us that seek for love in companionship, in partners and stuff, what are you really looking for? You're looking for that recognition of love itself. You are the love you seek. Now imagine you get to that place where you fully recognize the love you are. And the love you are is in everything. Would you still seek a relationship? You'd love everyone. Everything would be a relationship to you. Would you still desire a companion? Or would you just accept it when one came into your space and shared space time with you, not needing anything from each other? The wedding vows become, I love you, but I don't need you. I just appreciate the essence of what I am through you, and you appreciate the essence of what I am through us. Through the, it's the same. We are love. Love is your power, your superpower, because it's your truth. It's because what, it's what you are, which the ego must deny. It must also deny everything this power gives, gives you because it gives you everything. Because love, the power of love, gives you everything. Why? Because it's the only thing that exists. You are the, the true you, the essence you, the self, this holy son of God self, is the only thing that exists in truth. Everything else is not real. It's a projection, a misperceived projection, and a, a hallucination of a dreaming mind. No one who has everything wants the ego. Its own maker then does not want it. Can you imagine the little ego? The fear thought now feeling rejected. What does it do? Immediately attacks. Rejection is therefore the only decision the ego could possibly encounter if the mind that made itself knew itself. Okay, so the dreamer that made the dream knows itself. Be thyself knowingly. The great teaching of Jesus. And if it recognized any part of the sonship, it would know itself. Why? Because it is part of the sonship, and the sonship is part of everything that is true, the knowing of one's being. That's why I did. I mean, I went and studied psychology and human behavioral psychology and strategy and blah, 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 blah. Why? I wanted to understand the nature of human beings. And what did I really find as I started to understand the nature of human beings and different personality types and strength finders and I started to recognize the essence of my own being. And as I turned inwards and recognized myself, I recognized the truth of my capital S self. And the minute I recognized that as the only truth, I recognized the truth in everything else and stopped trying to understand that which is ununderstandable, which is illusion. And the different animas and animus and personas and personality traits, I let it all go because I realized the essence of what is in everyone is the truth. And the truth is the only truth. And that's all you need to know. Why would you want to understand illusions and get doctorates in illusions when you could just have peace in the self? And I spent 30 years studying and qualifying in all sorts of elaborate degrees and doctorates and master's degrees. Why? Because I wanted to be able to find safety in it. I wanted to comprehend it, find a better way. And so by seeking to understand outside myself, it eventually had no choice but understand the self and that what I share is the same with everyone else. And yet, put all that study time aside, just go straight to the course and then go and have ice cream. Why spend years and years studying psychology when all you're trying to understand is trying to make sense of an error? And just as you think you've understood it, something else comes up. So the ego, therefore, opposes all appreciation, hates gratitude, all recognition, the recognition of our shared being, all sane perception, the real, realization, all of that is a misprojection of ourself and all knowledge, the knowledge that God is, and I am an extension of that God is. It perceives their threat as total because it senses that all commitments on the mind makes are total. Why? Because all commitment are total. Forced, therefore, to detach itself from you. You see it as a voice talking to you. A demon or a mind or a tempter, temptation. It is willing to attach itself to anything else. And then you see yourself as attacked. You projected your thoughts outwards. Thoughts inform. Thought forms people. And now they seem to attack you. And yet it's all in your mind. 
not just you, the fragmented, localized mind, you, the dreamer's dreaming mind. The awake part of the dreamer's mind, the awake part of your mind, realizes none of this is true, but it waits for you to give your allegiance to it, your authority to the memory, the voice for God. But there is nothing else. The mind cannot ever make up illusions. The universe is proof. And if it does so, it will believe in them. True. You'll see the universe, you think it's real. And then you give it all sorts of attributes and you give it you know, all the astronomy and all the astrology and all the magic and all the, the moon is out and oh my goodness, we go batshit crazy and you give it properties and this one's retrograde and that one's Uranus and it's just nonsense and you give it power. Why? Because it's your mind giving it power. Now you believe the power's outside you. It's all you, dear son of God, dreaming. Wake up and realize, never left the kingdom and the dream will be over when you realize that the shared being is the only thing which is true. The Holy Spirit, the memory for God, undoes illusions without attacking them because he does not perceive them at all. So he has the answer to how do you give, how do you choose right-mindedness? You think like the Holy Spirit. You perceive like the Holy Spirit perceives. You become aware of the awareness, which is the Holy Spirit's awareness. You undo illusions without attacking them. Don't bitch about the world. Complain about this. Complain about that. This is wrong. That is wrong. This is right. This is wrong. This is good. This is bad. Okay. You just simply don't perceive them at all. You give them no attention. They therefore do not exist for him or for you if you so choose. He resolves the apparent conflict they engender by perceiving conflict as meaningless. This is vital that you understand. He's now, Holy Spirit, the memory is giving us the tools to remember ourself knowingly and become peaceful and then extend that peace and become the peace of God, the light of awareness in a world that desperately needs to see itself as the love of God. And this is vital, vital, here it comes, okay? I have said before, this is the Christ mind the awake mind talking to the sleeping, dreaming mind that needs to decide right or wrong mindedness. As I've said before, that the Holy Spirit perceives the conflict exactly as it is, and it is meaningless. Okay, so Holy Spirit perceives the conflict exactly as it is, and it is meaningless. I decided to highlight the rest just before we started this because it's so important that the next section is vitally important. This is a fundamental, you need to, you must understand this, must. I'm being, <laughs> I'm being as forceful as the ego. Okay. The Holy Spirit does not want you to understand conflict. Think of the war, Russia, Ukraine. Don't try and understand who's right, who's wrong, who did what, who didn't do. Propaganda, news, it's just nonsense. If both sides spinning like you spin doctors, okay? Pocket full of kryptonite. It's all nonsense, okay? He wants you to realize that because conflict is meaningless, it is not understandable. And do you either want to be right or do you want to be happy? The minute you want to take a side, what's good for you, what's bad for you. This is healthy, that's bad. This is good, that is bad. This is good, that is bad. Don't do this, do that. This is, this is the only way that the wake, the woke culture, the cancel culture. If you cannot allow people to have an opinion without hating them, without discriminating, without pushing them away, with trying to cancel them, you yourself will be punished by your own judgment. You have to look at all of it, realize everyone's entitled to their own belief while they're asleep. Step above the battlefield and realize none of this is real. Don't try and understand it. Don't try and correct it. Speak your truth. Live your truth even better than speak it. Live it by example. And people will watch and go, wow, what are you doing? How do you do this? Why do you do it? Ask questions. When they want to argue, you don't argue. Like, this is my truth. Do you want to hear or do you want to discuss? Do you want to discuss to learn or do you want to discuss so you have an opinion to prove your ego right? That's the case, not interested, not entertaining you. Come onto my YouTube video. Do you like what I'm having to say? Good for you. Is it helping? Good for you. Is it lifting you, making you realize that this is a whole new way of looking? Fantastic. If you are offended your concept of Jesus, go fuck yourself. I'm not interested in your shit. I don't give a fuck. I'm awake to the reality that when I say fuck, it's not true. 
And if you're offended, that's your fucking problem. How's that? On YouTube. Oh my God. Jesus is going to punish him. Jesus doesn't exist. The part of him which is awake talking to you now saying, fuck. <laughs> it's the same as Jesus. It's the same essence. It's just awake. It's just in this rogue body identity. And it just says, the whole thing's bullshit. I'm not buying into it. Don't get into it. Listen to David Icke. He goes really deep. David Icke, very deep. You start to realize he's talking consciousness. He gets so wrapped up in the world, the conspiracies and stuff, and he loses that. Wants to fix it, correct it. And then he loses the essence. He's got it. David Icke, very often. Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson, what a phenomenal consciousness coming through, bringing this incredible truth through, because he's highlighting the fact that this new world order wants to destroy our freedom to choose. But what happens when he gets emotional? When he takes the attacks as real, when he takes the threats as real, when he sees the body, he gets emotional, starts to cry. Step above the battlefield. Just say, go fuck yourself, ego. Who's saying that? The personality which was created by the ego to defend itself against the world it once perceived. The echo of the ego personality is still there going, it's not very spiritual. David Hofmeister would never do it. Of course not, he wouldn't. David Hofmeister is a beautiful, gentle soul. He is an awake consciousness that is just pure heart, pure love. You never have to beat anyone up. You never have to go to war. And so he could just flow into this world consciously beautifully. He came through conscious and he's evolved it. This one came through, uh, ready to kick ass, you know, take names, <laughs> conquer planets, ninja warrior, you know. And through its letting go and through its <laughs> suffering, <laughs> it just realized the whole thing's a joke. It had came through with special psychic gifts. Ooh, I didn't know what you're thinking. See your future. What did it realize? It's the same. No one has anything special. Psychic ability is desirable only if you're helping people out of their suffering. Not if you're making them think, look at you, you're so special because you're psychic, tarot, angel, gods, whatever the fuck. It's all bullshit, okay? It's all you. What are you reading? You're reading your truth. What Akashic records? What records? Where's this library? Oh, it's in the spirit world. Who's seen it? They write about it. Anyone ever seen it? Oh, it was channeled. By who? By yourself perceived through filters of ideas. And now, memory, the script is written, becomes Acacia Greek. Nonsense. Crystals. Oh, hold the crystal. It's got memory. What memory? It's all you. Oh, crystals have healing powers. They do? What's the difference between a crystal and a rock? Well, one bries and watches rugby and the other one just sits and glows. Uh, you have to be South African to understand that. You know? <laughs> It's, it's all nonsense. But the minute you try and figure it out, the minute it makes you angry, the minute you try and dissect it, psychoanalyze it, you're into the spiral of the dream. Nothing else can be understood because there's nothing to be understood in this world because nothing else is real and therefore nothing else has meaning. There's no meaning in this planet. It's all absolutely meaningless. And if you look at how people take themselves seriously, I remember architects, oh my God, we're so special. Look at, we can design and we understand history and proportion and dimensions. So we thought we were special until we met sales reps who earned 10 times more than we did. And we thought, oh fuck, what's going on around here? These guys just left high school and just gone on a piss up and they just drink and party and they get the nice cars and they get the girls and they get the credit cards. And we architects studied for six years, become an architect. <laughs> the plumber makes more in three days than we do in six months. No, oh, couldn't have become a sales rep. People look down on me. How can you be an architect and be a sales rep? Get a car, get the credit card, get the girls. Don't try and understand. Just let it all go. And that's why you need to suffer. Because through suffering, you realize. After enough suffering, you start to see the pattern. You start to see the same story repeat itself over and over again. That wounded inner child concept. There's no little child running around you. A wounded inner child is you are still unforgiven. It's unforgiven memory. And a wounded inner child is a wounded adult. It's an immature adult. Okay. Emotional intelligence. What is emotional intelligence? Mature intelligence. Conscious, mature intelligence. 
Mature means conscious. Realizes it's all a dream. Forgive, 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 forgive. The recognition of the self. The little one that hasn't grown up, that's still wounded by the world and is special and is psychic and is an empath and is a witch and does readings and card readings and psychic and is going to heal you through pranic tension and tantras and reikis and it's a child that hasn't grown up a true recognition of the self looks at all of this i listen to david Heifmeister closely and, he, and he's got this wonderful talk it says what's the one thing you must be, do to be truly happy well to be truly happy you have to recognize the error and the error is the belief in separation and then you need to adopt the correction and what is the correction you're the holy son of god the essence of what you are is the essence is the shared being in all of us that is love that essence is the essence of our creator love god is love you are love god extends creates the sonship the sonship is the kingdom you're one of the sonships you are god's kingdom abide in your heart the temple what's the temple it's the true part of you, not a symbolic PR, not shaped like a heart with a little arrow through it, and, you, know, it's, uh, you know, amorous love. No, it's the total acceptance of what it is, the recognition of our shared being. Abide in the temple, the truth of you. Abide in God. Be still and know I am. Not be still and know I am God. You're not God. You're God's son, the extension of God, one with the Father, but you're not the Father. You're not God. You don't have a God. You're the extension of God. You don't have a soul. You're the extension of God's soul, God's essence. And that extension is the sonship. That extension is the kingdom. You are that very same essence, which has the power to dream up universes. But the essence of God, which came before the universe, is a gazillion, trillion, nine septillion times bigger than the universe. Because it's forever the light of awareness, the light of love. Don't try and understand anything else. Just recognize the essence of yourself in the total silence, where the voice for God, the memory of God in you, not outside you. Using your voice, hearing voices outside you, take some pills, go see a doctor, white jacket, padded cell. It's all in you. It's using your voice. If you hear the Jesus voice, it's you. If you're hearing Buddha's voice, it's you. Buddha's a character in the dreamer's mind, of the wake part. At first, yes, symbolic, a road sign, a way to live. Ultimately, it's you. That's the only thing that has meaning. You, the essence, the extension of God's love. And this is why vigilance is required, that if you start getting trapped in anything else. If you will keep in mind what the Holy Spirit offers you, the memory of God offers you, you cannot be vigilant for anything but God and his kingdom, which is you, the essence of you, the chapel, the temple, the tabernacle. The only reason you may find this hard to accept is because you may still think that there is something else. There is nothing else. There is no thing else. Belief does not require vigilance unless it is conflicted. And think about how much vigilance wrong-minded belief does and how much marketing it does and how much money it tries to make and how much tithings it tries to gather from the congregations, build bigger buildings, accumulate, control, market, market, market. Why? Because belief is not necessarily true. Flip it around. Belief does not require vigilance unless it's conflicted. If you know the self and there's no conflict, you won't need any vigilance. While you conflict, it means you're struggling between wrong-mindedness with its multiple judgments, multiple choices, right-mindedness, be still and know I am. And when anything appears to that be stillness, you simply ask, am I aware? Rupert Spira teaches this beautiful teaching, self-inquiry, am I aware? The mind starts to scramble. What is aware? To whom does this appear? Am I aware? And the awareness, the mind goes quiet and becomes aware of being the awareness itself. The silence between the notes as the piano plays.
the silence between breaths. And it all goes quiet in the knowing of itself as that which is the awareness itself in which the entire universe is contained. And when it recognizes itself and lets go of its objectification, all of that disappears in the light of its own awareness. Everything that is matter is dense. When light expands, all of that density dissolves in the light of awareness. The moth in, flies into the flame and becomes part of the flame as it combusts in the flame. Where's the moth now? It's a distant memory that never was. If, the, if it is, there are conflicting components within it that have led to a state of war, right and wrong mindedness. And vigilant has therefore become essential. So unless you're fully at peace, vigilance, right mindedness, be, watch, keep your lanterns burning because the thief always comes in through the back door in the middle of the night when the times are darkest, when you're focusing on the illusion. Vigilance has no place in peace because peace is the very essence of what it is very essence of, of the self. It is necessary against beliefs that are not true, concepts and beliefs and ideas, and would never have been called upon by the Holy Spirit if you had not believed in the untrue. What did you believe in? A God up there, a deity in between you, heaven, hell, the planet, the universe, the world of bodies, appeasing a God. You're not good enough. You're not great enough. You're not bright enough, tall enough, short enough, fat enough, skinny enough, good enough, pretty enough, handsome enough, fast enough, rich enough, you believe that you weren't enough. Well, the truth is you're not enough and you'll never be enough for an empty void. Because an empty void tries to fill itself with illusions of bodies, people, places, things, and events. So a void tries to fill its, make, become fulfilled with void. It cannot. When that which appears as a body recognizes its true essence, you, yourself, Where's the void? What do you want to fill? What are you trying to appease? What are you trying to fix? What are you trying to correct? When you believe in something, you've made it true for you. When you believe what God does not know, and God does not know the universe or the world of bodies, separation, fear, guilt, and sin, your thoughts seem to contradict his and do, capital H. And this makes it appear as if you're attacking him. And how do you know? Because, oh, I'm not attacking God. Do you feel guilty over what you do? Do you believe in sin? Do you believe you've done something wrong? Do you believe you've been too something active, too sexually active, too materialistically active, too financially active, too, too active in something? Do you feel bad because you've gained and someone has lost or you've misbehaved and you've been this one, the guilt that people carry, promiscuous. You've had multiple lovers and a woman should only have one before she gets married. Some bullshit belief like that. A man shouldn't have more than 600. I don't know. Bullshit beliefs. Throw them all away. That's what we do. Difference between boys and girls. Now we're trying to make them all the same. They're not the same. The differences are illusion. They make no sense. I'm trying to understand them. We're trying to now make everybody 360 different types of gender, blah, 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 identifications. Because I identify as a purple porcupine that uh, sings in the full moon and therefore I'm um, whatever. Throw it all away. I, no matter what you identify with, the identity doesn't exist. So if you identify yourself with a howling wolf, you're still not a wolf. There's no wolf and there's no body. There's no you. What we're trying to realize is that our true identity is our shared being. And that is equal. You know, what differences between men and women this and that, muscular density, stop. Birds of a feather play together. Don't try and attach. Don't. Why do you want to compete anyway? You want to compete, the two ego competing. Only egos compete. I know, I was there. Actively, the South African Springbok kickboxer for many years, captain of the Springbok team, compete, world tournaments, gold medals, blah, 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 blah. If I wasn't winning, I wasn't happy. Who was unhappy? The identity wasn't happy. Why? Because it was miserable anyway. So let it all go. You're beyond this. You're beyond this. Oh, but this was done to me and this I was abused. Blah, blah. Who was abused in a dream? Do you want to move forward happy? Leave it behind. Forgive. Oh, and it took you to searching. 
you now have woken to yourself, gratitude for the awakening, gratitude for the suffering because it brought you to the awakening. Now leave it behind, move forward. Every time you bring it up, you want to go back. You're using it as excuse instead of moving forward in the light of peace. You don't want peace. You want excuses to be miserable. You want to be sad. You want to use things like empathy, blah, blah, blah. Stay in the past. Leave it behind. If you want to be miserable, stay miserable. Eventually you'll wake. When you've had enough misery, eventually you'll call. And when you call, it'll answer. And then, and then, you'll, and then you'll answer. And then you'll wake up. I've repeatedly emphasized that the ego does not believe it can attack God. Well, it does if it, you know, so I've repeatedly emphasized the ego does believe that it can attack God. So ego does believe. And when you're feeling guilty, you've attacked God and tries to persuade you that you have done this by making you feel guilty. So how do you attack God? You attack God's creation. You hurt others. You're deceitful. You lie. You cheat. You steal. You're hurting each other. You're hurting God. You think God's watching with a tablet. Nowadays, it's an Apple Mac or whatever it's called. And he's taking numbers. He's taking numbers off there. And you're going to suffer. Okay. If the mind can attack, the ego proceeds perfectly logically to a belief that you must be a body. Why? Because only bodies attack. And you see it in the news all day long, in every war. By not seeing you as you are, the essential nature of what you are, the self, it can see itself as it wants to be. And yeah, comes its identification with, I'm a father, I'm a mother, I'm straight, I'm gay, I'm black, I'm white, I'm colored, I'm green, I'm purple, I'm this, I'm that, I'm a CEO, I'm a musician, I'm famous because uh, I've made platinum CDs or whatever. I'm famous because people watch me and I'm a Kardashian, whatever that is, you know, no idea what they are. But what, what is that? Identification, aware aware of its weakness, the ego wants your allegiance. How's this? So it's aware that your identity is weak. It needs your allegiance, but not as you really are. It doesn't want the essence of self, and that's why it appropriates spiritual concepts and then calls itself spiritual. And then special, because I have a special gift, and you see there's advertisements, Reiki healer, you know, medium, medium at large, large medium, large, medium at large, and um, <laughs> tarot, crystals, crystal healing, Reiki healing, this healing, that healing, dance to the full moon ceremony, blah, 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 the millions of bullshit modalities that the ego complicates to make itself feel special and look, I'm a master, I'm a teacher, and I went to Tibet and Ladakh, as if Tibet or Ladakh is any different to Cape Town or New York City. Any place in this world is as sacred as any place in the world. And we love the old ruins. Oh, look at this, Machi Puchu, this, and the Inca castle, that. You know why the Incas don't exist? They wiped each other out. When the Spanish came, they took a side and wiped the rest. They wiped the Aztecs out. Why the Mayans don't exist? Because they wiped each other out. Why don't many of these African root races don't exist? The Maori, they wipe each other out. The, the white man just came and added fuel to the fire, made it easier for them to wipe each other out. The Indians were fighting in America, fighting with each other. The tribes were killing each other, destroying, raping, maiming. Ooh, they love the earth, destroyed each other. That's man. It loves the earth, destroys each other. Been doing it for centuries. That's what global ex ex exp expansion is. It's control, 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 dominate, 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 impose. How do you impose? Belief systems. Aware of its weakness. The ego wants your allegiance and lots of allegiances, but not as you are, as it wants itself to identify as. The ego, therefore, wants to en engage your mind in its own delusional system because otherwise the light of your understanding, here it is, the light of your understanding would dispel it. And what has the ego done? It's tried so hard. And what have you, the light of your understanding brought you here? The light of your understanding has just made you recognize the light of your understanding. Okay? So the ego wants no part of truth because the ego itself is not true. Your identity is not true. You're not special. Everything's identically special, different in its unique manifestations, which aren't real, unique. But everything uniquely different is not true. The truth of us all is the shared being. If truth is total, the untrue cannot exist. Commitment to either must be total. Right-minded or wrong-minded must be total. 
They cannot coexist in your mind without splitting your mind into right and wrong minded and therefore keeping you confused. If they cannot coexist in peace, and if you want peace, you must give up the idea of conflict entirely and for all time. The minute you find yourself in any conflicting thought, know you've chosen wrong mindedness, choose again. Go silent, go still, no judgment. No judgment. No place, no time, no space. No judgment. While you believe that two totally contradictory thoughts, thought system share truth, you need your need for vigilance is apparent. And you see it with hug your shadow, embrace your shadow, love your shadow, love your ego, embrace your ego, make peace with your ego. How can you embrace a shadow? Have you tried? Go when the sun is shining, there's your shadow. Try and embrace it. All you're going to do is end up lying on the wet grass. You can't embrace a shadow. You realize it's not true. You don't pay any more attention. And if a shadow... When does a shadow happen? When it's outside you, creating you, the ego, cast the shadow. What casts the shadow? The ego. Now, the ego wants to embrace the shadow. Return to the essence of what you are, the light. Extend. What happens to the ego? It becomes unaware. The essence of what you are becomes unaware of the once upon a time forgotten projection of itself. Let it go. Wake up to the reality I am. Your mind is dividing its allegiance between two kingdoms and you are totally committed to neither, either the egoic worldly kingdom or the kingdom of your true self. Your identification with the kingdom is totally beyond question except by you when you are thinking insanely. Why? Your identification with the kingdom is totally beyond question except by you. When you are thinking insanely, when you're thinking you're a body-mind. What you are not, what is not established by your perception and is not influenced by it at all. Percep perceived problems in identification in any, at any level are, pro are not problems of facts. Okay. So what you are is not established by your perception. Remember this, what you are is not established by your perception and can never be perceived. It's fully known and is not influenced by your perception at all. Perceived problems in identification at any level, including spiritual or awake or enlightened, at any level are not problems of facts. They are problems of understanding. So you cannot become enlightened. You are the light of awareness, the real you. What becomes enlightened is the temporal fading away of the body-mind identification. As the light flows through it, the body-mind identification enlightens. In other words, dissolves in the light of the self, son of God self, Christ mind self awareness. Since their presence implies a belief that what you are is up to you to decide. So there are problems of understanding. And it's not for you to decide, okay? It's for you to let go. The ego believes this totally and wants you to believe it. Hence the religions and the dogmas of the world. Being fully committed to it is not true, no matter how much who says what is real. Anything that can be touched, felt, proven. Why do we take photographs? To prove the past exists. That's why we, if you notice, you can't go anywhere without anyone having their cell phone out watching. Just put the thing down and enjoy it for what it is. Oh, but I want to record it. When are you going to watch it? Oh, it's because I want to show it, post on. Look at what I did. Look at my wonderful life. Look how I've traveled. Why don't you just enjoy yourself, enjoying yourselves? No, need photographs, need cameras. You know? Ego, therefore, is totally committed to untruth, perceiving in total contradiction to the Holy Spirit and to the knowledge of God. And how can you contradict the knowledge of God, which is the only truth? You can be perceived with meaning only by the Holy Spirit because your being is the knowledge of God. Wow. So you can be perceived with meaning only by the Holy Spirit 
because your being is the knowledge of God. It doesn't have the knowledge of God. It is the very essence, extension, the knowing of God. Be thyself knowingly. Any belief that you accept apart from this will obscure God's voice in you. God's voice in you, not outside you coming at you, and will therefore obscure God to you. Why? It's your true essence. Unless you perceive his creation, capital H, truly you cannot know the creator, and you are his creation. So until you recognize that the real you is God's creation, since God and his creation are not separate, you, a capital H, his creation are not separate from God. The oneness of creator and the creation is your wholeness, your sanity, and your limitless power. This limitless power, limitless, without limit, is God's gift to you because it is what you are. You are the limitless power of God because it's his gift to you as you. If you dissociate your mind from it, you are perceiving the most powerful force in the universe as if it were weak because you do not believe you are a part of it. And we love to say things like the universe will provide as if it's something out there in the ether and you're floating in the universe. You are the universe that will provide. Why? When you know what you are and you extend what you are lovingly, what do you receive? More of what you love because it's more of what you are. So don't seek you first the kingdom. You extend lovingly and it comes back at you. Perceive your part with, perceive without your partner, God's creation is seen as weak. It's not weak, but it's seen as weak. And those who see themselves as weakened do attack. Why? Because you can't remember what you are. So you make up ideas, you project it outwards, you attack that which you projected, which you have rejected in you. So what you hate about the world is what you hate about yourself. You go, but oh, I didn't do those things. You hated it because it's in your nature. You have those attack thoughts. The, the, the ego either externalizes or internalizes. It attacks either externally or internally, but it's always, always attacking. We, the external attack, the extrovert. The internal attack, the introvert. We think introverts are kind and quiet and peaceful. They're attacking themselves. That's why they become victims of the world. Okay? The attack must be blind. However, because there is nothing to attack and therefore it's made itself up. Therefore, they make up images, perceive them as unworthy, and then attack them for their unworthiness. And yet it's all you. That is the world of the that is that is all the world of the ego is. Nothing. It has no meaning. This world, this universe, the moons and the stars and the alignment has no meaning. You've given it all the meaning. Yeah, but it's going to predict your future. Ah, script's written. Be still and know I am. You fell asleep, you woke up. What else do you want to know? Oh, am I going to find love? You are love. Oh, am I going to be happy? You are happiness. Oh, am I going to have peace? Yes, you are peace. Am I going to be taken care of? You are being taken care of. What are you worrying about a future when you don't even become, you're not even aware of what you have right now? Forget about the predictive futures. It does not exist. Do not try and understand it because if you do, you are believing that it can be understood and is therefore capable of being appreciated and loved. And the minute you are capable in a, of appreciating and loving an illusion, oh, the beautiful sunset, appreciating it, loving it, the sunset, you're trapped, you've made it real. Recognize that what you see when you see a beautiful sunset is your shared being. And it's the beauty of your shared being that acknowledges anything. Can you look at the beautiful squalor of a, a favela or a squatter camp or, you know, a, a ghetto and look at the sunset and love it equally? And until you do, you're trapped in the separation. If you think a sunset's of God, but the ghetto is not, you're mistaken as to what you are and what the world is. It's all you. If you think the pyramids... Tibet, Ladakh, Machu Picchu is spiritual, more spiritual than downtown get, get, get to Johannesburg. You're trapped in illusion. Oh, but it's toxic in Johannesburg and it's so peaceful up in the mountain. 
They'd have been there 2,000 years ago, and they were murdering each other, throwing their mothers off the cliff, sacrificing virgins. Hmm? So you think you know, you don't know. You don't know what anything's for. This entire world was made out of hatred and fear. All of it, bodies, made out of hatred and fear. You don't know what it's all for. Okay. And that would justify its existence, which cannot be justified. You cannot make the meaningless meaningful. The world is meaningless. Don't try and make it meaningful. Give it to the Holy Spirit to reinterpret for you. And it becomes, everything becomes an echo for the mind for God. Not to be special because you can see and others can't. It reminds you to be still and know I am. Know you are the extension of God's love. This can only be an insane attempt. Allowing insanity to enter your mind means that you have not judged sanity as wholly desirable. Be still and know I am. The only thing you desire. If you want something else, you will make Okay, let's go back. I just lost you there for a second. Okay. What's going on, you know? Charo just is, are you muted? I don't know exactly where we lost each other, but I'll start off again. So allowing insanity to enter your mind means that you have not judged sanity as wholly desirable, the knowing of one's being. Okay, that's, that's what true sanity is. If you want something else, you'll make something else, because, but because it is something else that isn't true, and it will attack your thought system and divide your allegiance. And this is what the whole world of spirituality is focused on, it's all about making manifest, making, 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 inquiring, acquiring your happiness in order to be peaceful and abundant. And yet, seek you first the kingdom, and all else shall be given. We want to acquire everything else and then pull it into the kingdom. Never will. I, I spent my whole life making millions trying to do that. Made millions, still wasn't peaceful, still wasn't happy. You cannot create in this divided state, and you must be vigilant against this divided state because only peace can be extended and you are in a permanent state of extension or making. Extension, the self, the divine self of God, or making of the ego. Just like you made this universe, you make everything out of fear, because everything you accumulate, everything you chase is in order to make yourself happy, because you fear being unhappy, you fear being alone, you fear being rejected, you fear being abandoned, you fear scarcity, so everything we do in the search of happiness in this world is because of fear. Your divided mind is blocking the extension of the kingdom, which is you. And its extension is your joy because the kingdom is you and it is your joy. If you do not extend the kingdom, the love you are, you are not thinking. And the only thoughts you have which are true are the thoughts you have of unconditional love with your creator and creating as E capital H extended and then created, creating is extension. In this depressing state, which the world finds itself in right now, accumulating, accumulating and control mechanisms and masks and Corona, and it's always some sort of variation coming out, control, 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 fear, fear, fear. Okay. In this depressing state, the Holy Spirit reminds you gently that you are sad because you are not fulfilling your function as co-creator with God co-creator, sharing love, and are therefore depriving yourself of love. And what is love? In your physicality, it's expressed as joy. Love is joy. Joy is love. The condition for love and joy is peace. So it is all the same. Love, joy, peace is the exact same essence. And from our understanding, love is the essence of what we are. The joy is the nature of that essence. Peace is the essence of that essence. It's the same. It's the same thing. It's not I wish you love, joy, and peace. It's one and the same thing. 
as the essence of what you are. What is the difference between love and joy? There is none. What's the essence of the difference between joy and peace? There is none. The difference between peace and love is none. The minute you give attributes to love, it's no longer love. Love is the extension of God, you. Very essence, life is love. God is life. God is love. Love is peace. Love is joy. It's the same thing. Don't try and, oh, try and define peace. What is peace is the absence of conflict. Love is the absence of conflict. Joy is the absence of conflict. What is joy? The absence of anything else but itself. Joy. This is not God's choice, but yours. If your mind could be out of accord with God's, you would be willing. You would be willing without meaning. Okay, so this is not God's choice, but yours. What is not God's choice, but yours? To be sad, to be unhappy, to be depressed, to suffer, to believe in your past, to believe you've been hurt, to believe you've been bruised and wounded. It's just a belief. Let it go. It, because God's will is unchangeable, no conflict of his will is possible. Because God's will is unchangeable, no conflict of his will is possible. Not God's choice, but yours. And if your mind could be out of accord with God's, you would be willing without meaning. So you're creating stuff, you will to will, and you manifest stuff with no meaning. Everything you pursue, people, places, things, and events, it's because you fear not having because you fear being separate, because you fear being alone, because you fear being rejected, because you fear you're not good enough. When you know you are perfect and you're more than good enough because you're perfect, you're God's extension. What do you fear? What do you pursue? Nothing. You just share all of you. That is seek ye first the kingdom. This is the Holy Spirit's perfect, consistent teaching. Creation, not separation, is your will. Creation, extension. Because it is God's and nothing opposes this means anything at all, nothing. Being a perfect accomplishment, the sonship can only accomplish perfectly, extend perfectly, extending the joy in which it was created and identifying itself with both its creator and its create and its creations. Knowing they are one. The knowing of one's being is the knowing of God's creation, God's kingdom, the essence which is God, the essence which is yourself, the essence which is love, joy, peace, the essence I am. Seek ye first to know the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. And all else shall be given you. And you're one for nothing else. And while you're in this temporal body-mind dream, you now become the light of the world. You extend it into all your creations. Love your creation. Let's stop recording now and take some questions. We now arrive at chapter 7.7, .7, the totality of the kingdom. There's the answer, the totality. It's, it's one and all. No division in the totality of the kingdom. Whenever you deny a blessing to your brother, in other words, any judgment of your brother, as you bless them, you will feel deprived. Why? It's all you. It's an extension of you. Your brother is an extension of you. You, the dreamer. Because denial is as total as love. It is impossible to deny a part of the sonship that is, as it is to love it in part. You either love all of it or not at all. Can't decide this is good and that's not. It's all you. It's, you love your creation. is love the entire universe, everything in it equally. In other words, accept it as it is, as you, and accept its process and awakening. Nor is it possible to love in to in it totally at times. You cannot be totally committed sometimes. You're either committed or you're not all the time. Denial has no power in itself, but you can give it the power of your mind, remember, which is all powerful, whose power is without limit. If you use the mind to deny reality, Reality is gone for you. Of course, not the world's reality, but the true reality of what it is. The, the reality of the world is an hallucination, a misprojection of you. Reality cannot be partly appreciated. 
That is why denying any part of it means you have lost the awareness of all of it. That's why you can't become spiritual by becoming a recluse and hiding on a mountain and avoiding people. Because you're not yet, yes, you'll have times where you need to go introspectively. But once you've found the essence of yourself, you now need to come out and pour it lovingly. Jesus didn't go hide under a rock. He came into the world, came into the world that needed him, a world that was in complete strife, under complete control of, of a cruel empire. And he came to liberate people's minds, not their bodies, not to bring them freedom from the oppressors, but to bring them freedom from the only oppressor, which is the ego mind. Yet denial is a defense, and so it is capable of being used positively as well as negatively. Used negatively, it will be destructive because it will be used for attack by denying certain parts of the, your creation. But in service of the Holy Spirit, it can help you recognize part of, of reality and thus appreciate all of it because when you recognize a part of it, you recognize the essence. When you know a, a, a water droplet is the same essence as the ocean, you know the ocean. Mind is too powerful to be subject to exclusion. It's either all or nothing. You will never be able to exclude yourself from your thoughts because your thoughts are your projection. It's your perception of self. The true mind is completely still. But the minute it projected, it identified with its projections, it body mind and its localized projection and saw itself separate 8 billion times on this planet right now. When a brother acts insanely, he is offering you an opportunity to bless him. So either you're seeing a cry for love or an act of love. His need is yours. Yours to bless, his to be blessed. And therefore both is the blessing. You need the blessing you can offer him. So when you bless, you are blessed. There is no way for you to have it except by giving it. Because by giving it, you know you have it. This is the law of God. We spoke about it last week. The law of one, what one has, they all have. It's immutable. It never changes. And it has no exceptions. What you deny, you lack. Not because it is lacking, but because you have denied it in another and are therefore not aware of it in yourself. So as you judge the world, as a man judges, so he shall be judged. What? By whom? By his own judgment, not by God. God's judgment is simply my son. This is my son who with, with whom I'm well pleased. He's just awakening, loves his son. And of course, whatever his son is dreaming, the love of God is there. Every response you make is determined by what you think you are. And of course, what you, th what you think created you and that either you're a part of it or not. And what you want to be is what you think you are. So don't start beating yourself up because you don't like it. You are what you think you want to be. You are exactly what you want to be. You've manifested it. What you want to be then must be determined, must determine every response you make because it's you making the response. No one else. You do not need God's blessing because you have that forever, but you do need yours because you've denied God's blessing and therefore your own as an extension of God. The ego's picture of you is deprived unloving and vulnerable. You cannot love this and you cannot love it because it's unlovable, but you cannot love something which is deprived, unloving and vulnerable because it's not true. Yet you can very easily escape from this image by leaving the image behind, leave your past behind. Don't listen to the past. It's not going to tell you anything new. It didn't tell you thousands of times before. You are not there and it's not you. It's just a dream of you. And no matter what has happened to you in the dream, it's not real. No matter how abusive, how destructive, how painful, leave it behind and be as you are here now. It's just, it was a dream that got you to recognize yourself here now. Be grateful for it because it's your suffering that got you to find a better way. Be grateful for your suffering. Don't embrace your suffering. Love your suffering. Be grateful for it. Let it go. Dissolve in the light of your awareness. Don't get trapped in loving your past, hugging your past, and talking about it at every opportunity. Look at me. I've transcended this because I suffered and I suffered and I struggled. That's why people want to write books, want to tell everybody how much they suffered. 
They want to make the suffering real and themselves special because they've transcended suffering. If you transcend suffering, you don't talk about it anymore. You don't hear me talk about my past cry. I talk about a matter of fact, just explain that if I can transcend, so can you. I don't use it to glorify this identity. There is nothing to glorify. There is no more identity. Do not see this picture in anyone or if you accept or you have accepted it as you because it's all you anyway. All illusions about the sonship are dispelled together as they were made together as we fell asleep in fear. Teach no one what he is, what you would, sorry, teach no one that he is what you would not want to be. So don't accuse someone of something and attack someone and give them labels if you wouldn't want to be that. Your brother is the mirror in which you see the image of yourself as long as your perception lasts, your error lasts. So your brother is your mirror. And so if you see something toxic, it's you. If you see something hurtful, it's you. It's all you. So see them as loving and know yourself as loving. And perception will last until the sonship knows itself as whole, the whole sonship, all of it as one, because there's only one dreamer. You made perception. You made it. And it must last as long as you want it. So as long as you want it means as long as you want to believe in fear, sin, guilt, the past. Let it go. Illusions are investments. Investments by whom? The ego. They will last as long as you value them. This world, the forest, the trees, the dolphins, the sunset. Let it all go. It's beautiful because your mind is. Not because it is. It is a projection of you. If you're seeing it as beautiful, it's because your mind is aligning with the beauty and love that is the extension of the Son of God. Values are relative, but they are powerful because they are mental judgments. And what you value, you judge as worthy for yourself and therefore becomes valuable to you. And you'll defend it at all costs, like beliefs are defended and ideologies are defended, whether they're good or bad, whether thousands of millions of people agree with you or not. You know they're not good when you feel guilt. The only way to dispel illusion is to withdraw all investments from it. Withdraw all investments from this world. And they will have no life for you because you would have put them out of your mind where they exist, only in mind. While you include them in it, you're giving life to them and making them real for you. And that will trap you in it. Except there is nothing there to receive your gift because it's all not true. It's an hallucination of you projected onto a screen we call the universe. The gift of life is yours to give because it was given you, but life is love. And therefore, what is the gift of life? It is the extension of love, not creating babies. You are unaware because you don't create, you make babies. You make love, you make babies. So you make more of your own illusion and you project it and you think it's loving. Okay, So you are unaware of your gift because you do not give it. You cannot make nothing live since nothing cannot be enlivened. Everything you see is an extension of the life you are. All of it is life. Okay, It's all you. Therefore, you are not extending the gift you both have and are. Extending the gift you both have and are. And so you do not know your being. Know your being. Know yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself knowingly. All confusion comes from not extending life because that is not the will of your creator and therefore not your will, because your will is to will God's will. You can do nothing apart from him, capital H, because you do nothing apart from him because you've never left him, capital H. Keep his way to remember yourself and teach his way lest you forget yourself. Okay, so his way, capital H, capital H. So keeping his way is being yourself knowingly and extending yourself knowingly as that which is the love of God. Give only honor to the sons of the living God because God is life itself and count yourself amongst them gladly. The sons of God, of the living God, of the life itself. You are the kingdom. Only honor is fitting for those, is a fitting gift for those who God himself has created worthy of honor and whom he honors. So capital H there and a capital H there. Give them the appreciation God accords them always because they are his beloved son in whom he is well pleased. It, this comes especially with people that have hurt you, abused you, you know, used you and hurt you in the past and abandoned you, whatever. 
Love them because if they hadn't hurt you, you wouldn't have sought out a better way and you wouldn't be at this place where you know yourself as the self-same essence as that of our creator. You are the love, you are the kingdom, you are the peace of God. And you are remembering this and you are recognizing it in your knowing, not just understanding, you're transcending understanding, you're starting to know this as yourself, okay? And you cannot be apart from them because you are not apart from him, which is God, capital H. Rest in his heart, rest in his love, rest in your heart, okay? Rest in his heart, which is your love, which is rest in your heart, which is God's love. Rest in his love and protect your rest by loving, by being the love of God, but love everything he created. In other words, accept everything as is and try and change it. Unconditional love is unconditional, but love everything he created of which you are a part or you can learn of, the, of his peace and accept his gift for yourself as and as yourself because you are his peace, capital H, and accept his gift because you are his gift to not only the self, but all yourselves. You cannot know your own perfection until you have honored all those who were created like you. The entire universe, all of it is you, and it's therefore created like you. One child of God is the only teacher sufficient to teach another. One teacher is in all minds, and he and he teaches the same lesson to all. And that one teacher is the memory of God, the Holy Spirit, that, that is awoken in physical form, in the form of Jesus, becoming the Christ, the awake part of the mind, and the Christ and the Holy Spirit are one, one mind, the awake part of the mind. And that is the son that teaches the sonship. So Jesus is a representation of how we should be and act while in this world. He is not to be worshipped because he is yourself at the highest level of awakening. He always teaches you the worth of every son of God, all your creation, every extension, teaching it with infinite patience, born of infinite love for which he speaks. Every attack is a call for his patience, since his patience can translate attack into blessings. Every attack is a call for patience. Patience, love, joy, peace. Those who attack do not know they are blessed. They attack because they believe they are deprived. And they attack what? The external world, if they're extroverted, or their internal world. So how many of you beat yourself up because what was done to you? And you hold yourself and the people that hurt you into ransom. Therefore, you're keeping yourself in the past. And the minute you're in the past, you're not in the present. And to know yourself and to be yourself knowingly, you have to be where? Here now. Be as you are here now in the present, the lights have come on, okay? Give, therefore, your, of your abundance and teach your brothers theirs because we're all abundant in God. Do not share their illusion of scarcity. Don't let your empathy buy into the scarcity. Empathy, believing the body's sensations are real. It's all thought projected through the device called the body. And the minute you buy into other people's scarcity and victimhood and suffering, you make it real for you. And now you're experiencing yourself as a body, them as a body. You've made the suffering real. You're both in the trap, you're both in the illusion. So do not share their illusions of scarcity or you will perceive yourself as lacking. Everybody has exactly what they're meant to have, including those people suffering and those people thriving. They're exactly where they need to be in order to awaken, awaken to the reality of themselves. The script is written perfectly. There's nothing. Don't get stuck like David Icke. He gets the big picture. He sees the essence of the soul. And then he gets stuck into the dynamics of the illusion. Don't. What's meant to be is going to be. The ego is going to try and prevent it. The Illuminati, the Anunnaki, the New World Order, whatever you want to call it, they try and prevent us from awakening. Why? Because it's the height of the darkest, darkest ego. They're trapped by it. And so they're going to deprive everybody and attack everybody and suppress everybody to ascend themselves. You don't have to do that. You don't have to fight it. All you do is in a rebellion, no thank you, okay? And you just step above the battlefield. Attack could never promote attack unless you perceive it as a means of depriving you of something you want. 
So don't go and attack the new world order and the Fauci's and the vaccines and the, all the nonsense that the fallen ego mind has created. Don't attack it. Nor rise above the battlefield. It's not for you. Not for you. Don't go and convince others that it's bad. Blah, 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 blah. Above the battlefield. If you don't want to take it, don't take it. Find a way around it. Okay? Yet you cannot lose anything unless you do not value it and therefore do not want it. So let go of body, mind, identity. Lose that. Okay? This makes you feel deprived of it. And by projecting your own rejection, you then believe that others are taking it away from you. This is the typical way that ego works. You must so the, you think the world's trying to take away your freedom. The world cannot take away your freedom. It can take your freedom of illusionary thoughts by giving you the thoughts of illusionary freedom. But when you transcend the illusion, there's only one right thought, right-mindedness. Be still, know I am. Extend yourself lovingly through your passionate talent and nature, which is God's essence playing out through this individualized projection of the dreamer's mind called you. You must be fearful if you believe that your brother is attacking you to tear the kingdom of heaven away from you. And that's why I hear people, go, oh, it mustn't take fluoride in the toothpaste to prevent the soul from ascending. Don't get the vaccine, prevents the soul from awakening. Blah, 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 blah. Nonsense. Nothing you do physically prevents the self from knowing itself knowingly. Nothing. You can take drugs, put yourself on a high, ayahuasca yourself into sun, sunset and until the mushrooms come pouring out of your ears and you can create little hallucinations. Of it. The self looks at all of this and goes, Guess what the self says when it sees the illusion? And then it laughs. Not real. Don't you make it real for you, because if you make it real for you, you get trapped in the belief it's real. Okay. This is the ultimate basis for all the ego's projection. Step above the battlefield. Don't buy into the illusion. Being the part of your mind that does not believe it is responsible for itself and being without allegiance to God, the ego is incapable of trust. Only the untrustworthy don't trust. And what is it that you want to trust? Oh, that they don't attack and kill your body. What are they killing? Oh, that they're going to take from you. They're going to deprive you of what? Deprive you of the physical world. Seek, about, seek the kingdom first, all else shall be given you. When you abide in the self knowingly as the self, as the self-same essence is God's essence, what else do you want and what can be taken from you when you know you are and have everything? And when you know and you are everything, what's going to be taken from you? See, our belief in Jesus' crucifixion is we believe that we need to be crucified in order to be ascended. You don't need to be crucified because Jesus demonstrated the most atrocious, most difficult, most horrific way of being killed. So he could demonstrate ascension. You don't have to be crucified by this world. You don't have to be a martyr in this world to ascend. I seek mercy, not sacrifice. He doesn't need you to suffer. Christ's mind, Jesus is saying, be as you are. And I've given you my essence, the natural talented essence called your talent, your passion. Share that with the world. Everything you've ever dreamt of. Out of fear in order to gain. You'll get that and so much more. No longer out of fear because you're extending yourself lovingly and the, that which makes you feel loved will come straight back at you. Don't worry about the world, the way of the world. Projecting its insane belief that you have been treacherous to your creator, sin, guilt, and fear. It believes that your brothers who are, in, are, as, who are as incapable of this as you are, are out to take God from you. Nothing in this world. No anarchy, no Illuminati, no New World Order, no Fauci, no no one can take God from you because you are God's extension. You are the love of God. When a, whenever a brother attacks another, that is that what, that's what he believes. No one can take your peace away from you. No one takes your peace away from you. Not the world, not like David says, not a mosquito, not a fly. You, holy son of God, nothing can take your peace away from you unless you give it permission and you give it the power, your power of your mind, to take away your, your peace. Be still, know I am. Center in the self. Become self-centered, not selfish. Not at the expense of others. But at the expense of your ego. Dissolve the ego in the light of your awareness. 
projection always sees your wishes in others. If you choose to separate yourself from God, that is what you will think others are doing to you. You think that people want to take away your autonomy. You have no autonomy. You have the freedom of choosing right-minded only. Any other choice you make and wanting millions of choices is wanting to make millions of choices and therefore keep the illusion real. Don't listen to anything that creates conflict, that creates fear, the warning of a future, the warning of a this, this, that, this. All go. Be as you are. Be knowingly as you are. Extend the love and all you need will be given you. Don't worry. And it will give, be given you and it wants to give it to you. It wants to prove itself real because it just wants your allegiance. It wants your faith. God wants you to remember yourself faithfully. You are the will of God. He didn't come here by chance. He didn't create you so that you could appease him. He created you out of love, not so that he could be loved. Okay, Because there is no he to be loved. God is the essence which extends and expands everywhere all the time. Omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, omnificent. The creative energy and all. You don't have a creative spirit. Spirit is creator. And it's going to create through the script you wrote before you incarnated, which the Holy Spirit wrote for all of us, in which you participated, the awake part of you participated, and you're now playing it out. You're exactly where you're meant to be. You have exactly what you're meant to have. You're with exactly who you're meant to be with. You live exactly where you're meant to have. You're exactly the same, the body that you were meant to have. You're exactly, exactly where you're meant to be. If you think otherwise, you believe in the power of something which isn't true. And you don't actually give power to that which is, which is your holy son of God self, remembering through the memory of God, voice for God in your mind, what you truly are. Prodigal son returns, realizing he never left the house. He just dreamt he did. Do not accept anything else as you will, or you are denying what you are. Deny this and you will attack, believing that you have been attacked. And this is what we do. We believe the world's attacking us and wanting to take away our autonomy, which is completely untrue anyway, because our autonomy is the oneness we share with God, not the oneness of the individual. And this is where the authority problem comes in, why we hate authority. But see the love of God in you as you, and you will see it everywhere because it is everywhere, because it's all you. See his abundance in everyone. And you will know that you are in him and with them, capital H there. They are a part of you as you are a part of God, one and the same. Not blasphemous. You know, the Christians call us blasphemous. Why? Because we're non-dualist and we realize it's not us and God. It's us in God. Okay, Christ as our awake mind. Therefore, one with us. We are Christ. We are the Holy Spirit, Son of God. You are as lonely without understanding this. And this is why you're lonely you don't recognize what you are and therefore you believe you can be a body you know alone as god himself is lonely when his sons do not know him capital h capital h okay capital h but this is a play on words because it's not saying that god is lonely without you because god doesn't know you're gone okay? he just wants you to awaken to that reality so god just wants you to know that you are perfect and you've never left the peace of god is understanding this the peace of god is understanding this so when you understand you are the same self same essence as that which is the essence of god and it's all you where's the loneliness okay there is only one way out of this world's thinking just as there was only one way out of it, one way into it one way into it fear one way out of it love understanding totally by understanding totality it's all you, the Holy Son of God dream, okay? A dream that never happened. Perceive any part of the ego's thought system as holy and sane, holy delusional, and holy undesirable, and that you have correctly evaluated all of it. Never take sides. None of it is worthy of your time. Don't give any attention to the ways of the world. This correction, and that's what it is. It's the correction. Holy Spirit, the memory of God is the correction. Enables you to perceive any part of the creation as wholly real, wholly perfect, and wholly desirable. Wanting, oh, wanting this only, you will have this only. And giving this only, you will be only this. Seek you first the kingdom, be the kingdom, 
share the kingdom and all else shall be given you because all else is you. The gifts you offer to the ego are always experienced as sacrifices. Think about parents. They have children and they say, look how much I sacrificed for you. Well, first you made them, okay, which was in self a sacrifice of your own awareness. And now you've extended it in making. And then you say you sacrificed, but you wanted to have them. Love doesn't sacrifice. Love shares willingly. And if you sacrifice under duty without love, well, then it's delusional. Okay, because love, I mean, duty with love is not duty, but love. Okay, but take love out of it and it's immediately whatever it was before. Before it was true. But the gifts you offer to the kingdom are gifts to you. They will always be treasured by God because they belong to his beloved sons. Capital H and capital B and capital S. Because we are God's beloved sons who belong to him. Capital H. All power and glory are yours because the kingdom is his and you are God's kingdom. Let's stop there and take some questions. We now reach um, section chapter 7, 7.8, the unbelievable belief. The unbelievable belief says it all in that one sentence paradoxical but true and paradox can only exist in illusions but always point out to the non-reality of illusions that's why two truths can exist and can coexist even though they're completely opposed and can only happen in the dreaming mind in reality there is no paradox we have said that without projection there can be no anger so why we get angry? Because we've projected our hate, fear, sin, guilt outward. And then we attack it in others. Why? Because it's within ourselves. And we don't recognize it within ourselves, but we hate it within ourselves. But it, also, it is also true that without extension, there can be no love. So what extends? The self, love, extends. Ego projects outward. Okay? And it obviously seems to be going outward in both directions because it's, it's continuously extending. These reflects a fundamental law of the mind. Must get this. Fundamental. That's what this beginning part of the course is. Getting the fundamentals, the foundations correct. And therefore, one that always operates. It's always at play. Law of one. Law of attraction perceived by the ego. Law of one. What is given to one is given to all. What you have, you have because you give. Okay. Is always operating. So even though the dreamer is dreaming and he's in God, the law of one is still taking place in his mind, but he misperceives it and, and he calls it a secret or the law of attraction. But it's not law of attraction. It's actually law of reciprocity. It's, it's given, given share. And what's given to one is given to all. It is the law by which you create and were created. Extension. God extends. It is the law that unifies the kingdom. And keeps it in the mind of God. It never leaves the mind of God. The dreamer is still in God's mind. Dreaming of the universe. So the universe is in essence in the dreamer's mind in God. And therefore the power of God and all of his creation. And, in, and all of God's creativity. The law of one takes place in the dreamer's mind too. But misperceived. Not realizing that what he looks upon is extensions of himself represented in space-time as matter. But nothing that is matter in space-time matters at all. What truly matters is that which cannot, cannot be seen by the eyes in space-time matter, that which can only be known. You can either see or know. You can't know and see. The minute you see, you don't know. Because seeing is not knowing. Knowing is awareness itself. Awareness is not seeing. It's misrepresented through seeing the knowing of one's being, the knowing of one's essence, the essential essence, which is the same essence as God, soul, self, holy son of God, holy self, holy spirit, mind, Christ mind, the knowing of it as the self. To the ego, the law is perceived as a means of getting rid of something it does not want, getting rid of poverty, gaining with wealth, getting rid of victimhood, gaining power. To the Holy Spirit, it's the fundamental law of sharing. To have is to give. By which you give 
what you value in order to keep it in your mind because it's the knowing of yourself. To the Holy Spirit, it is the law of extension. What is given to one is given to all. To the ego, it's the law of deprivation. Think of the New World Order. Think of the Fauci's. Think of what the world's trying to do. Deprive others in order to have and have more for themselves. And it's never enough. Why? Because nothing is ever enough for the ego because nothing ever is, including the ego. It therefore produces abundance or scarcity. So if it's from spirit, abundance. If it's from scarcity, from the ego, scarcity. And think of people that have billions of money. They still believe in scarcity, which is why they want more. If they didn't believe in scarcity, if the billionaires of this world and all those billionaire foundations took their billions and gave everybody equally and shared it equally, this world would immediately move out of, of, of dependence on one another, and it would be free to be knowingly. But while there's scarcity, we search for more. While we have more, we protect what we have and we try and grow it. World of illusions. And there's so much written under the spirit, spiritual guise. It's law of abundance, law of attraction, pursue, chase, more, 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 make manifest, make manifest, make manifest. And what is all the things we manifest for? Pleasure. And why do we need pleasure? When we don't know ourselves. Because the greatest pleasure you will ever know is the knowing of yourself knowingly. But while you don't know yourself knowingly, you have no peace. And so you need happiness and you chase it. People, places, things and events, vacations, houses, cars, relationships. And yet if you are that, the relationships, the cars, the houses all come because they're extensions, expressions of you. But you no longer hang on to them. They come, they go. They come, they go. They come, they go. You don't hang on to the, them going. You don't, you don't resist them when they come your way. But just allow it to be. So it's all depending on how you choose to apply it. That's your true choice. This choice is always up to you because it's your choice. But it is not up to you to decide whether or not you will utilize the law. Why? Because the law is always at play. Every mind must project or extend because that's how it lives. And every mind is life. Mind is life. God is life. And mind exists in God's mind. And, still, and God is life. And so life, your mind, is the extension of God. The ego's use of projection and anger can be finally undone. The ego always tries to preserve conflict. It loves it, loves war, loves to talk about war. Uh, and now we have two actors fighting, getting divorced. We take sides and we punish her and punish him and attack her. And she's bad and blah, blah, blah. And story, story, story. And the divorce has been over for a month already. We're still putting it in the news. Why? Because we can never let it go. It is very ingenious in devising ways that seem to diminish conflict because it does not want to find, want you to find conflict so intolerable that you will insist on giving it up. And it's only when you give it up, when it's just enough because of your suffering, enough suffering, there must be another way. And it's that, that, that admission, there must be another way, that seeking forth and that really calling out to love, calling out to God, this is okay, thy will be done. The ego therefore tries to, persuade you that it can free you of conflict unless you give, give the ego up and free yourself. Okay. It is using its own warped version of, of the laws of God. The ego utilizes the power of mind only to defeat the mind's real purpose, to extend and to share. It projects conflict from your mind to other minds in an attempt to persuade you that you have gotten rid of the problem. So you project it onto others and then you try and do Make them feel guilty. Okay, That's how that works. There are two major errors involved in this attempt. First, firstly, strictly speaking, conflict cannot be projected because it cannot be shared. Any attempt to keep part of it and get rid of another part doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't really exist. Remember that a conflicted teacher is a poor teacher and a poor learner. Why? Because you learn as you teach. And if you're conflicted, you're not learning because you're trapped in the conflict. His lessons are confused and their transfer value is limited by his confusion. The second error is the idea that you can get rid of something you do not want by giving it away. You're giving it away how? You're giving it to yourself. And this is what we do. We take our fear, our rejection, our hurt, our pain, and we push it onto others. We give it away. Giving is how you keep it. So what you resist 
persists. So you can't resist it and think it's going to go away. You can't hide from the world and think the world's going to go away. You can't reject the world and deny the world, denounce the world and think it's going to go away. What you denounce, you resist. What you resist, persists. Okay, so if you want to truly be free, love your creations and forgive it. The belief that by seeing it outside, you've excluded it from within is a complete distortion of the power of extension because what you see outside is your extension. That is why those who project are vigilant for their own safety. Okay? So they hang on to their beliefs. They are afraid that their projections will return and hurt them. And we do believe retribution. We believe that you know, we put out a curse and we expect it to come back. We put out attacking thoughts and they come straight back. Believing they have blotted their projections from their own minds, they also believe their projections are trying to creep back in and everybody's trying to conquer you. Everybody's out to get you. Since the projections have not left their minds, they are forced to engage in constant activity in order not to recognize it. Never wants you, ego doesn't want you to contemplate it, think about it, and offer it to a higher mind. Show me another way of seeing it. You cannot perpetuate, continue an illusion about another without perpetuating about yourself. Why? Because it's happening in your mind. There is no way out of this because it's in your mind, because it's impossible. It's a, it's, it is impossible to fragment the mind. To fragment is to break into pieces and the mind cannot attack or be attacked. And that's what the dreamer thinks he's done, fragmented into 8 billion fragmented pieces of himself, but they are all himself, the son of God. The belief that it can, an error the ego always makes, underlies its whole use of projection, projected the whole universe. It does not understand what mind is, the same essence as God, and therefore does not understand what you are, the very truth of you, the real you, not the body mind, is the essence of God, is the essence of God's kingdom, is the love of God. Yet its existence is dependent on your mind because the ego is your belief. So you want to get rid of the ego? Stop believing in what you listen to. Stop listening to thoughts. The ego is a confusion in identification. You're good enough, you're not good enough, you're this, you're that, and all the ac accusations it sends you away, and then you take it and you project on the world and you attack it. Never, never having had a consistent model, because there's never been one, it never develops consistently. And even when it has a consistent model, like as in the Jesus 2000 years ago, what does it do? It turns it into a deity to be worshipped, unworthy, and then it takes its whole lesson and turns it into a lesson of sacrifice and suffering, thereby distorting and misappropriating the beautiful lesson of love into a lesson of vengeance and idolatry. It is the product of the misapplication of the laws of God by distorted minds that are misusing their power. And that is exactly what books like the Bible have become, where it's all about fear, fear of God. What is, what do you, what is really meant by the fear of God? Why would you fear that which loves you, creates you? It's meant to be adore God, adore, you know, bless your creator, you know, absolute adoration for that which created you. You know, it's the, the adorning of the beauty of that which created you, which is, of course, then adorning that which is the extension of God's son, the sonship. What have we done? Turn it into a deity, worshipped, sacrificed, and completely misunderstood. Do not be afraid of the ego. It depends on your mind. And as you make it by believing in it, so you can dispel it by withdrawing belief from it in identity. In other words, let go of the identity, get, get identity and get rid of, of any judgment of self and of selves projected. It's all you. Do not project the responsibility for your belief onto anyone else, or you will preserve the belief. So don't say, oh, it was my parents that made it real for me, my society, my religion, whatever. Let it all go. And when you empty the cup, you'll be filled with the new awareness that will transcend understanding into knowing. When you are willing to accept sole responsibility for the ego's existence, because you, the dreamer, created this illusion out of fear, because you forgot what you were when you fell asleep in God's kingdom, you will have laid all anger aside, all attack aside, because they come from an attempt to project responsibility for your own errors onto what? onto something else. It's all you. You're blaming yourself by attacking others. 
but having ha having accepted the errors is yours. In other words, this, you heard me say this before. Take the stance of yourself as the dreamer. Yes, you've localized as the appearance of you, but take the stance and responsibility for all of it. Every single living being in this planet and every other planet in the universe, you've dreamt it all up. It's all you. Now, from this localized position, know yourself. When you know yourself, you know the self and everyone else. When you love the self, you love the self and everyone else. And what do you now do? You extend the love you are, the love of God, and you extend it into the, into the sonship by becoming the example of the awakened son of God. You live like Jesus did. You become a Christ. No need for crucifixion. He's already done it. Done. You don't have to be crucified or attacked. There's no attack thoughts coming your way. You transcend with loving thoughts. Every time you see someone attack, cry for love, extend love. And as you extend love, the cry for love dissolves and becomes loving. Okay. So don't keep those errors. Give them over quickly to the Holy Spirit. Show me another way of seeing this. This is the only way you give it to the Holy Spirit. You don't ask him to take it away. You get him to, to reinterpret it for you through right-mindedness. To be undone completely, which means understood and therefore dissolved through gratitude and forgiveness. So that their effects will vanish from your mind and from the sonship as a whole. Because what your duty is to yourself as the Holy Son of God, and therefore through the sonship, which is your creation, the, the myriads of fragmentations you imagined in your dream the holy spirit will teach you to perceive beyond your belief because truth is beyond belief and his perception is true the ego can completely can be completely forgotten at any time because it is totally incredible it is a totally incredible belief and no one can keep a belief yet it's judged to be unbelievable the more you learn about the ego, the more you realize it cannot be believed. And therefore, you don't actually want to learn it. The incredible cannot be understood because it is unbelievable. It's, that's why it's incredible. It's not believable. The meaninglessness of perception based on the unbelievable is apparent but it may not be recognized as being beyond belief because it is made by belief. Let's try and really dive into this one. The meaninglessness of perception based on the unbelievable is apparent. The whole world, the world of bodies and all the atrocities the bodies get up to. But it may not be recognized as being beyond belief as long as you take it real, make it real and talk about it and attack it because it is made by the very belief in separation. So your belief in separation has, giving, has created a meaningless world. And by attacking it or trying to understand it won't give you any meaning. Why? It was created by a meaningless thought, a thought called fear, the error, the ego. Okay. The whole purpose of this course is to teach you that the ego is unbelievable and will forever be unbelievable. Don't believe in a single thing you see. Not a single thing, okay? The truth of it is it's all you, but it's you hallucinating as you've projected it outwards and made it real for you by believing in space, time, and matter as a true reality and not knowing the essence of the eternal self here now as the truth, as that which is really real, truthfully real. You, you who made the ego by believing the unbelievable, believing in fear, cannot make this judgment alone. By accepting the atonement, the fact that you are one with God and you are God's love, God's son for yourself, that is what the atonement means. The reality that all of this is a dream. You're deciding against the belief that you, that you can be alone, thus dispelling the idea of separation and affirming your true identification with the whole kingdom as literally part of you. Why? Because the kingdom is literally part of you because it is all you. So accept the atonement by recognizing the essence of yourself, the essence of your nature is that which is God, okay? which means you're never alone because all of it is you. So I often say that when I'm alone, I recognize I am all one. And very often when I was trapped in my sadness and, and attack thoughts and I'd be surrounded by people, I'd feel most lonely. So I had to find time away, separation, seclusion, in, introspection, reflection, meditation. I am quietening a mind, and then it all just awoke. And then the desire 
the love desire to pour itself out, to share itself, made me want to come back out into the world and share all of this knowingly, without preaching, without trying to change, just by being present, being as I am, being knowingly the son of God in the dream, being one with my brother Christ that is awoken in the dream and demonstrated for me how to be. And through these talents and this um, once upon a time echoes of my ego personality play out through my essential nature, which is called leadership, strategy, marketing. And I, I come and pour out into this world and I serve my creations through my passion natural passionate talent of nature which is which essence is the essence called love peace and joy the essence which is god this identification is as beyond doubt as it is beyond belief your wholeness is no limits because being is infinity and you are being and you are infinite you are forever you are limitless you are the creative power of god it's not that you are creative you are creativity itself it's not that you meditate you are in a permanent state of meditation, either asleep or awake. In the awake state, you become conscious, consciously awake, consciously aware of being the essence. The essence, awareness, aware of being awareness itself. I am that I am. Be still and know I am. One with God. Let's stop there. Um, and then on Sunday, this week, this coming Sunday, I will do chapter section uh, 7.9, 7.10, and 7.11. And then we will wrap this chapter up before the end of the month. Thanks for joining me. I hope that you have followed. I hope this has brought some light of awareness onto these fundamental chapters. And uh, please listen to it as often as you can. Share it. If you're offended by it, switch it off. Find the right teacher for you. This is the authentic self projected through this body-mind, echoes of illusions the truth now shining through. Um, have a great day. Have a great evening.